We are going to talk about alternate day fasting and weight loss. Now, traditional dieting models tend to have a daily caloric restriction. For example, if you want to lose weight, people may prescribe you to consume 500 calories less per day and keep that intake the same over the course of a week. Now, time-restricted feeding patterns are becoming more and more popular, and these can be done on a daily basis, something like intermittent fasting, where you would go for certain periods of every single day without consuming food, or they can be implemented on a weekly basis, where you will have certain aggressive fasting days with less aggressive fasting days, knowing that over the course of the week, your caloric balance would still be the same. Now, alternate day fasting will alternate, clues in the name, days of very aggressive caloric deficits with less aggressive or no caloric deficit at all. Now, psychologically, this can be appealing for a lot of people because rather than feeling like they're dieting on every single day, they will aggressively diet on some days and then on other days just eat whatever they want. Now, we know from research up until this date that alternate day fasting can be a successful tool for weight loss. The question is, in the long term, is it a superior tool for weight loss? Now, in a brand new study, it is the longest study of its type to date. It was 12 months long and compared alternate day fasting to daily caloric restriction and their effects on weight loss, which would be better. So it had a six month weight loss phase followed by a six month weight maintenance phase. There are three groups to this trial. Number one, the alternate day fasting group. They would intersperse 25% of their daily caloric needs on their fast days with 125% of their daily caloric needs on feast days. Then there's a daily caloric restriction group who would consume 75% of their maintenance calories every single day. And then there's the intervention group who are just there for funsies, carried on doing whatever they wanted to do, just serving as the control group. So over the course of the 12 month period, there was no statistically significant benefit to alternate day fasting. Weight loss between conditions was similar. Also, in terms of compliance, it appears that people struggle to adhere to alternate day fasting as much as they did with daily caloric restriction. So there was a higher dropout rate in the alternate day fasting group. Also, the alternate day fasting group was supposed to intersperse feast days and fast days. 25% of caloric needs and 125% of caloric needs. And many of them would consume less calories than prescribed on their feast days and more calories than prescribed on their fast days, which means that kind of converged somewhere in the middle. So the difference between fast and feast days was not as significant as it should have been, and it wasn't as significant as prescribed. So what we know from this study is that alternate day fasting does not appear to outperform daily caloric restriction, assuming that your calories at the end of the week stay the same. Now, this does not mean that alternate day fasting is not potentially a valuable tool. What it means is it is not a superior tool. So what I would recommend is using this in your toolbox for people that tend to gravitate towards it and use it as a personal preference. So for example, if someone psychologically likes adhering to alternate day fasting and their calories at the end of the week are where they need to be, they may have more success on this protocol. But there is no need to try and direct people towards this protocol unless their personal preferences suggest that they will get better results from that. So what we can take away from this is that it is more important to look at someone's caloric intake over a weekly basis rather than a daily basis itself. So you may find that you personally benefit from cycling calories in terms of adherence. You may find that you're happy just having the same calories every single day. But if your calories at the end of the week are where they need to be, that's what's important. You can program the week to best suit your personal preferences. So that's it. I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you.